Hey there, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you why it's important to define a project pipeline when working on large scale data intensive projects and how to automate it end to end so that you don't actually have to manually produce your research results, but you can just sit back and relax and just have the computer do the, the job for you. What's the motivation for doing this? Well, um, if you have worked on large scale data intensive research projects, then you know, you may realize that very quickly you're going to create chaos on your disk. Uh, you have directories that you can't really you know understand what's in there and you create a complete file chaos of like file naming conventions and it's really difficult to find the work as a first objective here you're going to learn how to organize your files and directories and then the second problem is that you know even if you've set up your project well you may not really know how to you know execute your files like in which order and you know maybe the order that you recorded isn't really the order that you actually end up doing and here we're going to explicitly define those so that there's just like one command that you need to issue uh, to have your uh, whole project uh, being built. And right now I'll show you a couple of examples of how um, I did things in the past and how I do things now. In this folder, you see the directory and file structure in a project that I worked on during my PhD. You already notice I'm mixing particular file types like Word documents with, I don't know, Excel files and manuscripts and if you look at the directory names they're also like all over the place i got like model runs but then i have model runs for run three i don't even know um then i have r code here but isn't the r code also related to the model runs um so i'm actually unable to to find my files let alone know um which file is actually the most current file that i've used in my in my project if you look at my uh, more recent projects um, the directory structure is actually much cleaner. You've got like top level folders that define the, the pipeline stage, like analysis or derived in which I prepare my data sets. And then even there inside the subfolders are pretty clean. I have, for example, a subfolder called cold and well, surprise, surprise, that one has only the code that I need to execute for my project. And like this, I've now structured uh, many of my projects. For example, this is a project um, I've recently worked on um, in which I um, have, uh, you know, a data folder in which I store my raw data, a document folder in which I store my documentation, a source code folder with pipeline stages, and um, a, a folder with generated files. So what about this automation, right? So if you look at, if you look at the um, data prep folder, for example, I have a make file in here. And um, such a make file is actually a way in which you can specify how your project is being built. Um, so for example, to build um, the Spotify top 200 data set or to unzip it, um, I need the file unzip and I need um, some external data and then um, make is gonna issue this command to build it up. And like this, actually it's very easy to run your entire project. So let me show you real quick. If I type make in this folder, um, actually I get the message that nothing is to be done for, 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 for this project um, because everything is up to date. And right now I'm going to um, go to my um, file, for example, that downloads certain statistics um, in this project. And instead of, you know, uh, just like not changing it, I'm just going to add a few spaces here and I save this file. So now the computer kind of realizes that I have changed the file. And when I reissue my command, make has figured out a way to rebuild this project. Uh, let me give you a, qu a quick disclaimer too. So um, this is just one way uh, in which I have figured out uh, ways to set up a project. There may be many alternative directory structures that you could use, many alternative build tools that you could use. Um, and depending on the, the type of project you're working on, you need to adapt um, what I'm telling here. For example, if you have intense collaborations, it's mandatory that you also use versioning um, for your for your code um, to make sure that you don't like kind of kind of uh, edit the same source code files. Um, also, um, if you move your uh, estimation code to the cloud uh, on multiple machines, there may be different requirements that that you will have to meet, um, uh, such as uh, being able to download your raw data um, uh, on any machine that you're on, uh, and that requires some some extra configuration. So here it's just like a simple setup, which I'm showing, a relatively simple setup on a local computer. And I think the best way uh, to get you started is just like start doing it. And I'll show you in one of my next videos on um, how to get started um, using automation and uh, using um, um, properly defined pipeline stages in your projects. It's gonna boost your efficiency tremendously. So thanks a bunch for watching this one.